And good morning, everybody. This is the Fred and Jeff Show. This is Fred Ronstadt. So we're going to talk about the show sure. on Discord, but uh, let's talk about you a little bit. Okay. Because I, I saw I went to your website, and man, there's a lot of dramatic stuff going on. Yeah, you know, I like to mix it up. I like yeah, I like everything. I like mm-hmm. dramatic. I like uh, I like a uh, little action. I like comedy. I like I've done children's shows. You know, for me, it's always been what's next. You know, I like to do something and then try something completely different. You know, I played monsters, creatures. I played the creature on the wing in the movie The Twilight Zone. Uh, I played the, the vermin man in Constantine. That was you? That was me. So I do, I just wow. go from, you know, for me, it's just always been fun. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous that at, you know, my age, I'm still playing dress up, you know, and cowboys and Indians and games and things. But that's kind of what it is. You just disappear into various characters. And I always call it a form of time travel. If you're a character actor, you basically get to live in different worlds. And uh, currently, I'm living in Thomas Jefferson's world, which is, you know, of course, fascinating and yeah. completely different than things I've done previously. I love it. Well, on the real, it was like you went from a doctor throwing uh, another doctor out of the OR. Right. Yeah. And then the very next scene is uh, you as a doctor giving your condolences to, for the loss of somebody. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. total, total flip mm-hmm. on. I just, I recently, I also played an opium addict uh, on Deadwood. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, I was either giving drugs or taking drugs. <laughs> I, just can't, I just can't decide which suits me better, <laughs> you know. So, so we're, uh, let's talk a little bit about your history. You know, grew up uh, wanting to be an actor your whole life or sort uh, of? I would say so. Uh, I would say that was always in my system. Uh, my father was very much against it. Uh, my, fa- my my uncle, his brother, was an actor. He would always constantly point to him and say, say you want to live that life? Because he was always struggling. And mm-hmm. You're not going to do that. You're going to be a lawyer. So I got into law school and then at the last minute applied for acting school just because I just wanted to see what happened. I got in, dumped law school. I decided not to go and started uh, uh, acting school, graduate level acting school, and that was it. You know, So I, I, I guess I went on hiatus in terms of my dream from, oh gosh, 10, 12 years. But then once I started it up again, as a kid, I knew I wanted to do it, but once I started up again in uh, 76, which is yeah. when I started grad school, I knew it was for me, and that was it. I never looked back. I'm, I'm passionate about it, and I love the business. I love the craft. There's nothing about it that I don't find just fascinating. Even the struggle, I find fascinating. It's a great challenge. No, if you're, you're uh, an older gentleman. I'm like, you know. Why, thank you. Well, yeah. But, I mean, you know, when, <laughs> when you were in grad school, when you were in grad school. In I mean, 1932, yes. Well, you, were, you were, I imagine, you know, doing the ingenue stuff, and, and, and so you, over time. I was very handsome back then. Well, you still are a oh, striking man. In a career, you just, I mean, you, you don't start off as a 20-something-year-old kid doing character work. No. No, um, you do. I did a lot of just young, kind of young, fresh-faced kids. I did a lot of commercials back then. And, uh, you know, various things. And, yeah, as, you, as, as a character actor, as your career advances, you just kind of move into a different category. Right. You know, I was, I was a young kid. Then I was a young dad. Then I was a, you know, a regular dad, businessman, lawyer. Now I'm moving into older, you know, like detectives maybe, doctors, you know, older. And I, I tell you, if I can stay, you know, fit and ready, I can't wait to just do this into my 90s because there's roles for old guys, really, you know, older characters. And I played Lear, uh, which he's clearly much older than I am, but... I played it with a very young company, the Porters of Hellsgate, and so I was older than all of them, and I really enjoyed it, and I would like to revisit that role someday. And uh, any, like I said, the more variety, the better. You so know. you have any any bucket list stuff? And, and a bucket list. Uh, I, I always want to play Iago. Um, I, I really want to play that. I definitely want to do um, uh, um, Oliver. Who's the character? Uh, Fagin. Fagin. I, I've got to do Fagin uh, before I'm done. And uh, so those kind of. Let's see what else. Those are the two. So are, you, are you tall enough for Don Quixote? Or? It's funny. It never appealed to me like some of the others. I think I like darker, more twisted characters. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily want to play the hero. I want to play yeah. the, the weirdo. You know, I mean, it just appeals to me. You know, I mean, uh, Jefferson's actually pretty straight laced for me. Uh, <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I'll tell you this. Our director, our, our brilliant director, Matt August, uh, who I've relied on to shape my performance because he really has a clear vision of what he wants, is constantly reining me in to just play it straighter. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to accentuate and do things, hands, emotions, everything. And he says, no, no, you, as he says, there's three characters. There's a burning, the three characters in this play. There's a burning inferno. There's a, a, uh, uh, a small, there's a burning inferno, a whirling dervish, and a post. And you are the post. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, I say, I just the post. And he goes, well, uh, you're birch. You're made of birch. So you're, you're a little bit special. <laughs> but basically, Jefferson was a ramrod straight guy who stood there and he had, I won't say he didn't have a sense of humor, but he was pretty much all business all the time. So I've, in this particular show, learned to just stand still and be contained, which is different for me. But I'm really starting to enjoy it. 
because I see that I can be the calm center of the storm. The, the exciting thing about doing theater like this is over the course of several weeks rehearsal, you find a kind of a chemistry between the three of you. You find a way of syncing up and working together that complements each other. Initially, maybe you're clashing, you're not sure how it all fits, and then over the weeks, it just starts to kind of gel and lock in, and then you've got your, your show. And then you just, once you're locked in, then you've got it, and you just play it out. You know? Right, all so. right. So what did you do to prepare for this? I mean, did you, did you come in saying, you know, I am going to know everything about Thomas Jefferson and then get thrown in this mosh? Exactly, and uh, it's funny how that didn't work out. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you see, Scott, Scott Carter, he's the most generous person in the world. And, you know, he basically will give you a book a week. He'll just give you a book. If he's interested in a subject or thinks you're interested, here's another book of Thomas Jefferson. So he would basically give us books all the time. So he gave me about five. Now, this books. is the director. This is, no, this is the writer. Oh, Scott the writer. Carter. But this is your creation as much as anybody else's. Well, sure. Uh, now, there have been, and thank you, but there have been like three or four other productions now. Yeah. So the play is out there now. And yes, you could say that I originated the role. Um, uh, anytime a production is done, even this one, which is with the same director and two of the same actors, it's a kind of a recreation. You're starting from scratch again. And I don't know exactly why that is, but you rediscover well, sort of the, the play. sort of the nature of live theater. Yeah, and you rediscover the play. So even as I did the first production, I feel like I'm now doing it again. There's other people doing it, and we're each doing our interpretation. I would never claim to um, have ownership over this. Um, it's certainly going to be something that's explored by many, many actors over the years, and I'm just doing my interpretation. The show is... The Gospel According to Thomas Jefferson, Charles Dickens, and Count Leo Tolstoy, Discord.